Hey everyone, uh, I want to talk today a little bit about a least cost path. Uh, the idea behind this particular operation in, in GIS world is that you want to get from point A to point B as efficiently as possible, but that there are barriers in your way. So for example, this is, you might remember this data from lab three. These are a bunch of wetlands. Um, there was a dead bird in here someplace in lab three. But I'm just going to use this as an example of, let's say I want to get from here over to here, uh, and I'm walking, but I don't want to get my feet wet, so I'm trying to avoid walking through wetlands. Uh, that means that a direct line from A to B is probably not the best option for me, because if I do that, I'm going to walk through a bunch of water. So GIS has these tools that are related to least cost path analysis, um, it's hard for me to pronounce right now, least cost path is what it says up here. Uh, and so I'm just going to go through a little tutorial of just sort of simply how we might do that with this example of I want to get from here-ish to here-ish, uh, but avoiding wetland information. And I'm going to make it a little more complicated than just that, that simple story. So before we can do this type of analysis, we first need some point A and point B information. Um, so if you remember from lab five, uh, if I'm going to do that, then I need to make a new um, point shape file. And I'm going to call this point A, point B. Um, I want to make sure that I define some sort of coordinate system. So I'm going to define that to be the same as the wetland, which is a mass state plane coordinate system. Um, everything else here looks good. This is basically just creating a blank space from which I can then edit. Um, and so I want to create my point A and my point B. So I'm going to put my point A here. These are just arbitrary locations. I'm going to put my point B over here. So I want to get from one of those to the other one. So I'll save that. And uh, now I have, uh, and I can clear these. So now I have these couple of points over here. I don't want to create any more features associated with wetlands or anything else. Um, okay, so I've got a point A, I've got a point B. I also have more information than just the presence absence of wetlands, because if I look at my wetland information, I can see that there's actually some description, uh, a description for this IT value, which is also associated with this wetland code. Um, so if I want to look through shrub swamps, I mean, there's a lot 886 that I can scroll through or I can summarize this to make my job a little bit easier. So um, here's the summarize tool. It just popped up on my other screen. Um, I want to know not only the case of this IT value description, but I also want to know the wetland code. Um, and I'm going to go with the first wetland code because I don't want to add these up. I want to consider these as unique things. And why am I focused on the wetland code rather than just worrying about these text values? Because in a second, you'll see that I'm going to convert these features to raster using the conveniently named features to raster tool. And that requires a text value. So I care about the numeric text that's associated with these different wetland types. So let's get that summary statistics table out and then I can oops, open that up and see over here that, OK, I actually have eight total descriptive types of wetlands in this region. The frequency is how many times they show up, right? So there's one wooded swamp with conifers. There are 496 deciduous wooded swamps. Um, but this wet code, the first one that I see, is important over here because this is the numeric value that I want to use to convert my features to raster. All right, so there's two steps here, so I'm a little ahead. Bear with me for a second. Um, I want to go to geoprocessing and see where we're going because I tested this out before. I'm going to use the features to raster tool, conversion tool, to get from my wetlands to, um, let's call this wetlands raster. Um, 
the output cell size matters here, right? So, and this is going to be in units that are related to the coordinate system. Just when we were creating the point A and point B, we saw that this is a mass state plane projection. So we know, or I know, and you could know too, that mass state plane is a base unit of meters. So whatever I put in here is gonna be a cell size of meters. And let's go with 10 meter pixel resolution. And then the field that I'm gonna choose over here is this wet code because I want to reclassify my cost based on how hard these different things are for me to walk through. So that'll take a second for it to create a, uh, a raster grid at that 10 meter pixel resolution and it'll show up underneath the wetlands. Um, so now we can see, got our wetlands here and it's just chosen some like arbitrary color values in here for, for each of those wetlands, but we know what each of those numbers corresponds to, right? They correspond to bog and deep marsh and open water, et cetera. The other thing that's worth noticing on here is that there's a bunch of blanks. Um, so if I clicked over here and I brought this tool <laughs> over so that you can see it, we've also got a bunch of no data values. Those are things to watch out for. We don't want no data values when we're doing uh, most raster analyses because they will just continually show up as no data. And we want to be able to pass through no data values. All right, so we got our feature to raster. The next thing is to create the cost raster. So this is how costly it is to move through a single pixel. Um, so I have a, um, I've got my wetlands raster. I'm gonna input that. Um, the value here is the pixel value, right? Which is this 4789, which I know corresponds to bog, deep marsh, open water, et cetera. And I'm gonna reclassify all of these. And the one thing that I wanna pay attention to, well, one of the things I wanna pay attention to is the no data value. So I don't want this to be no data because no data on here is actually really easy to walk through, right? It's not walking through a marsh. So I'm gonna set that to one. Um, then I can say, okay, open water, number nine here, I definitely don't wanna go swimming. So I'm gonna set that to something that's like really high, you know, like 50 times harder to go through open water than it is to walk through a non-marsh area. Um, deep marsh and bog, so four and seven, those also sound pretty bad. So I'm gonna set those pretty high, tough to walk through. Um, and eight is a shallow marsh meadow or Ben, whatever that is. Um, that doesn't sound terrible. So maybe I'll set that to a five. And 12, 14, 15, 16 are shrub swamp. Eh, it doesn't sound terrible. We'll keep that as a five. Uh, wooded swamp deciduous. Mm, let's just give all these threes. You'll notice that I am just choosing arbitrary values <laughs> for all of these. These are like Huh, I feel like not swimming through a pond, but maybe my boots are good enough to go through a wooded deciduous swamp. Um, but really, I'd rather not walk through any of that stuff if possible. So I'm going to call this my cost wetland um, and go ahead and run this. And then this should then output a rectangular grid, right, that has not just numeric values for all of these. So I've reclassified what I knew all of these descriptions to be to these new costs associated with what I think it would, how hard I think it would be to walk through those areas. Um, let's take a look at those a little bit more. Um, so, wow, that's a beautiful um, olive color that GIS has chosen. So if I wanna go from point A to point B, I should probably, I'm not sure what happens if the uh, if point B is actually off my map. So maybe I'll just edit that a little bit to make sure that point A is, uh, is, oof. Uh. Mm 
just going to move it onto the map just in case uh, that took a while to do. Move, modify, done, save, yes. Still obviously not an expert when it comes to editing things, <laughs> as you can see. Okay. So I have my point A, I've got my point B, I've got a bunch of wetlands that I may or may not end up having to go through. Um, these values on here, by the way, I believe it's basically accumulative. So if I go one pixel, if I go from a pixel one to a pixel, another pixel with a one, that'll cost me two overall. If I go from pixel one to pixel three, that'll cost me four overall. And so GIS is looking to minimize the number of the, the additive number of all of these things that you pass through. Okay, let's go back to our geoprocessing. Okay, so here's the key name of the tool, which has nothing to do with least cost path, <laughs> because why would we call something that? Um, it's actually called optimal corridor connections. So my input raster or feature regions, key here is feature regions. This is my point A and my point B where I'm, and you could have point A, B, C, D, E, F, right? And it would make a whole bunch of connections between all of those different points. Um, I am going to, what I actually want is an optimal output connection line, least cost line. Um, I want to input a cost raster, which is my cost for the wetlands, this thing that we're looking at right now. If you had a barrier layer that was like, you cannot pass through, there's a, you know, a rich person's private property and they'll shoot you or something like that. If you go to this area, then you could have a one zero or whatever you wanted layer in there too. Um, and the optimal output corridor polygon is my least cost polygon. That's because it will also create, and we can set a corridor width. Since I put the input cell size to be 10, I'm just gonna set a corridor width to 10. Basically, you can make a line output. It will by default make a polygon output. And so we can run these. And then helpfully, uh, GIS is not going to pop these up into your screen, so we're going to have to go figure out where they went after it finishes this analysis. All right, but it says it did a thing, so that's good. Um, so now I want to go back over to my catalog because this is where I am likely to find my least cost line and my least cost polygon. And so these are in, in my folder connection, the one with the little house, that's my home. Um, connection. There's a geo database in there. And this is the default location where everything gets spit out, including that statistics file. Let me do the summarize. If I want to find it in another place, I can also look up here under databases. So it's in multiple places over here. All right, let's see if it did a thing. Okay, there's our least cost line from getting from there to there while avoiding wetlands um, and particularly, and it actually looks like it's avoided almost all the wetlands. It's gone a little bit through this one with a value of three. It said, okay, a little bit through. I'm going to get my feet wet a couple of times going through a couple of those ones, but not too bad um, a choice, GIS. And uh, if you just wanted to see the polygon, there is also a polygon and we can zoom in to see that it is indeed a 10 meter wide polygon going from point A to point B. So if you wanted the output as a line, then you can tell it to output a line. If you want the output as a polygon, you can tell it to fit, output it as a polygon. Now, if you wanted to add multiple other cost layers to this, right? Say there was a you know slope, like a big mountain over here, and it might be least, less costly to walk on flat slopes or on this way, you can create multiple cost layers and add them together to create a final cost layer associated with all of your inputs. Whatever you choose over here for these values, remember that it is additive. So going through a pixel with a value of two costs you twice as much as going through a pixel with a value of one. Um, so up to you as to how you choose to set those costs, that's very much um, at the discretion of the user. Uh, all right, I think that's good enough for this, uh, this analysis. So hopefully that helps.
Thanks.